Hello and welcome to Algebra 2. We are the Algebras and you're going to be doing some flip mastery with us. We're doing today multiplying and factoring polynomials. Before we get into it, just in case you've not met us in person before, wanted to point us out. So this is this guy right here, Mr. Bean. He has won a presidential math teaching award. Pretty impressive. This is Mr. Bruss. He won a district teacher of the year teaching award. Pretty impressive. This is Mr. Kelly right here. He also won a presidential teaching award. Pretty impressive. And this is me, Mr. Sullivan. And I have to put up with all three of these guys, which is probably the most impressive thing out there. All right. So that's us. You're going to hear our voices. You won't see our faces much. But if you ever miss us, feel free to come back to this video and watch. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is multiply polynomials. Now, remember from Algebra 1, polynomial is any combination of one or more terms. We don't have any uh, variables on the bottom, all on the top. So this would be a binomial times a binomial, two terms times two terms. Now, what we're going to do is do something we already know. We're going to distribute. So I, if I just had this problem, x times x plus 3, I could distribute that, and I'm going to do that. So that's going to be x times x and then x times 3 so plus x times 3 now most of you can do this step in your head you don't need to write this out I like to write it out the first couple of times for you so you see what I'm doing alright so then we're going to double distribute I have two things in this binomial so I'm going to multiply this twice now I'm going to do the 6 over here so now I'm going to do um, 6 times x so that's 6 times x and 6 times 3. And last but not least, we're going to simplify this out. So, simplification means we multiply. Remember when we are multiplying the same base, I add the exponents, so that's x to the second, 3 times x, 6 times x, and 18. And last but not least, I look for common terms, so I have 3x and 6x is 9x, plus 18. And there we have it. All right, let's try another one. All right, before I go on, a couple of things. If you're new to our program, these are videos. You can stop them. We may talk a little fast at times, and we apologize, but we do it knowing that you can stop the video. The other thing is you need to listen to what we're saying. A lot of you watch videos and we see you watch videos and you're either listening to music or don't have the sound on. You need to listen to what we say because we don't always write everything out. Okay? All right, so let's try this one. 2x plus y squared. A lot of people do this. They square each of these inside and think it's the same thing. It is absolutely not the same thing. What does it mean to square something? It means I'm going to take what I have, 2x plus y, and multiply it by itself. All right? So now I can do this. I'm going to double distribute. So I'm going to do 2x times 2x. And then I'm going to do 2x times y. Then I'm going to distribute the y, y times 2x. And I'm going to do y times y. Sneak it in there. So let's simplify 2x times 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. x times x is x squared. 2 times x times y is just 2xy. And now remember, you should write these alphabetical, and you'll see why in a second. y times 2x is again. 2xy, alphabetical. y times y is y squared. All right, now I look for like terms. So I have 4x squared. See, alphabetical, it's easy to tell these are the same thing. So 2xy plus 2xy's is 4xy's plus y squared. There we have it. All right, so this is Mr. Bean. Great guy. I wanted to show you that. All right, let's move Mr. Bean over here. Ooh, the math is on his face. That is trippy. We don't want to see that. All right. So over here we have now a binomial times a trinomial. Nothing changes. I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply it by all three things. So 3x times 2x squared. Then I'm going to do 3x times 3xy. Then we do 3x times negative 2y squared. All right, now I'm done with that one. Now I'm going to do negative y. And I put plus and then negative y inside. We can sort that out later. Negative y times 2x squared. 
Now I'm running out of space, so I'm going to do plus, and then I'm going to come down here. Negative y times 3xy plus negative y times negative 2y squared. All right, so let's simplify. Um, 3 times 2 is 6. x to the first times x to the second. Add the exponents is x to the third. 3 times 3 is 9. x times x is x squared. y. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, so I'm going to change this to a minus 6. Now, if you had um, plus negative 6, it's okay. It's the same thing. So, x, y squared. All right, I'm done with that one. Negative y times 2, so again, this is going to be negative 2, x squared, y. Down here, I have negative 1 times 3, so that's negative 3, x, y squared. And a negative times a negative is a positive 2y to the third. All right, let's look for like terms. I got no other x to the third, so I have 6x to the third. I like to erase them or cancel them out. x squared is y. I've got 9 of them and 2 of them. 9 minus 2 is 7x squared y's. Cancel those out. I got negative 6xy squared and negative 3, so that's negative 9xy squared and 2y to the third. There we have it. Whoa. So that is multiplying polynomials, all right? Now in a second, we're going to do these backwards, okay? We're going to do just binomials times binomials, but we're going to do them backwards. We're going to factor it. Okay, so now we're going to be factoring. I want to look back at the very first example we did. And the very first example was x plus 6 times x plus 3. And when I went down, I double distributed, and I combined like terms, and then I got x squared plus 9x plus 18. So now we're going to go backwards. We're going to factor. So in the end, we want a binomial times a binomial. Now, if you look here, we're going to do these steps, all right? We're going to go from x squared plus 9x plus 18 to x squared plus 6x plus 3x plus 18. The real question is, how did we get 9x to 6x and 3x, all right? So we had to change that 9x, and we had to get it to equal 6x plus 3x, okay? If you are astute here, you're looking at 6 and 3 is 18, right? 6 times 3 is 18. If I multiply them together, I get 18. If I add them, I get 9. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing, okay? So let's look at one right now. So... We're going to rewrite this one. Our very first step is we're going to rewrite everything. 2x squared, excuse me, 2x squared, and then I'm going to have some middle terms, and then I'm going to have minus 21. And I need to figure out how to get this middle term. I need two numbers that equal negative 1. Remember, so they have to add to that middle one. So I'm going to add it to negative 1. I need two numbers that add to negative 1. And you'll notice that I put this as A, B, and C. That's standard form. So to get this, I need two numbers that add to negative 1, and I need two numbers that multiply to whatever A times C is. A times C, 2 times negative 21 is negative 42. So I have to think now, what are two numbers that multiply to negative 42 and add to negative 1? If you're not good at these, maybe you, uh, I'll show you a trick in a second, but you can write them down in your head. I start at 1, 1 times 42, 2 times 21, go that way. The other trick I know is I always start with numbers that I know. I know 6 times 7 is 42. And since it's negative, one of these has to be a negative, negative 7. I'm going to put negative 7 here, so I'm going to do plus 6x minus 7x, okay? All right, now we're going to do grouping. So I'm going to group the first two items together and the last two items together. So now I'm looking just in the, in the middle here. What are What is my common factor between these two things? Well, there's a 2 and a 6, so I can take a 2 out. I have an x squared and an x, so I can take an x out. And when I take that out, remember I divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1. I had two x's. I took one out. There's one left. 6 divided by 2 is 3. I had an x. I took it out. No more x. All right. Now I'm going to do the next one. I have negative 7x and negative 21. Here's a tip. Anytime this first thing is negative, it should only happen in the second one, you take a negative out. 
So that's the first thing. So what's in common between 7x and 21? Well, there is a 7 in common, so I'm going to take that out. So now divide. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is 1x. I didn't take any x's out. Negative 21 divided by negative 7 is positive 3. All right. Now check this out. Well, we, what do we have right here? We have, oh, we have another common factor. When we have a common factor, we take it out. This whole thing I take out. And what is left? 2x minus 7. And there we have it. We have factored it. All right? All right. Now, I want to talk about this long and quick check. Okay? This long and quick check. The long check is very simple. You multiply it out. Double distribute both of these. All right? The quick check, and this is what I highly recommend you do. All right? This will cover most of your mistakes. Not all of them, but most of them. First times first, 1 times 2x is 2x squared, which is what we want. Last times last, negative 21, which is what we want. Therefore, pretty close to guarantee that we did it right. Is it 100%? No. If I want to do a 100% check, I would have to multiply everything out. But I know you kids, and I know that you don't like doing the whole long check. So if I figure, if I can get you to just do a big enough check, we might be okay. All right, so now let's go over here. All right, over here now we have 4b squared plus 19b minus 5. And again, I have my a, b, c. a always goes with my squared term, b always goes with my linear term, and c always goes with my non-variable. Um, so a times b, a times c. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to my middle number, 19. All right, so those are the numbers I'm looking for. All right, so I'm going to write it out. 4b squared, and I'm going to have two numbers in the middle, right, that add up to 19b, and then minus 5. All right, so now let's check out a trick. Now, here's what's... Here, here's what tricks are good for. Tricks are good for helping you through problems, all right? But they are not faster. The fastest way to do this is to know your times tables of negative 20 and see which ones add up to 19, all right? But sometimes we need help. So we do this, we're gonna go to our y equals, here I am, and I'm gonna put the number that it equals when I multiply to a times c, so that is negative 20, and then I'm always gonna divide by x. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this table. And what it's going to do is going to give me all the factors of negative 20. So I go second table. And it gives me all the numbers that add up to, to multiply to negative 20. See the very first one, 0 is an error. 1 times negative 20, 2 times negative 10. This is a decimal, so that won't factor. 4 times negative 5, and so on, right? So we need the one. We start at the top, and I add. I want it to equal positive 19. So 1 times negative 20 is negative 20, and 1 plus negative 20 is negative 19, all right? So that right there gives me a big hint. 1 times negative 20. 1 plus negative 20 is negative 19. If I flip these, change these around, it becomes positive 19. So there we go. So now I'm going to put those in there. Plus 20b minus 1b. It doesn't matter if the 20 is here or the 20 is there. You'll get the same answer. All right. Going to group the first two together, going to group the last two together. I have a common factor of 4, I take it out. I have a b, I take it out. So now I'm looking what's left. 4 divided by 4 is 1, I had two b's, I took one out. 20 divided by 4 is 5, I took my b out. I have a negative, remember what we said, take that out. Now is there anything else in common between b and 5? There's nothing else in common. So that's not 0. There is always the number 1 that can be a common factor. So now I'm going to divide by negative 1, I get b plus 5. Common factor of b plus 5, take it out, it's our very first factor. 4b minus 1 is left. Factor 1, factor 2, let's do a quick check. b times 4b, 4b squared. 5 times negative 1, negative 5. Worked out, great. Let's try another one k squared minus 15k plus 56. So I need to multiply to the first 1 times 56, so that's going to be 56. And I'm going to add to the middle, negative 15. All right, 
So you can do your trick, you can do whatever you want, 1 times 56. I know that 7 times 8 is 56, and negative 7 times negative 8 is positive 56 and adds to negative 15. So here we go. k squared minus 7k minus 8k plus 56. Group these, because these two add up to negative 15. I have a k, take it out k minus 7. I have an 8 in common and it's a negative so let's take that negative out. So now I have k minus 7 common common. My first factor is k minus 7. My second binomial factor is k minus 8. And there you have it. All right here's Mr. Kelly with his favorite Halloween costume. Curious George is Son Max and the man in yellow. Very good. Let's try this one. So I need A times B. I need two numbers that multiply to 60 and add to 17. All right, so 3G squared plus, I need my two numbers and it's going to add to 20 in the end. I need some G here and some G here, right? All right, let's see here. I know that 5 times 12 is 60, and 5 plus 12 is 17. I know this. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you needed to put that in your calculator and do the trick. Or maybe you needed to write them out. Either way, that's fine. The more you do, the more you remember these, okay? So I'm going to put a 5G here. I'm going to put a 12G here. I'm going to group the first two. I'm going to group the last two. I'm going to look for a common factor. 3 and 5, nothing. There's a G in common though, so I'll take that out. So then I have 3G plus 5. 12 and 20, I can divide both of those by 4. So then I'm going to have 3G plus 5. And again, great job. If you get the same thing in here, you know something's right. So that's my first common binomial factor. My second one, G plus 4. There you have it. All right, what I want you to do right now is actually stop the video, pause it, whatever you need to do, and I want you to try these on your own. Now, a lot of kids don't do this. They just copy them in the end, but I want you to try these and then check your answers. Two reasons. Number one, you have to at some point try to learn this on your own. You're going to make mistakes. Wouldn't this be the best time ever to make a mistake, learn from it, and then know what you're doing the rest of the way? I think it would be. So I want you to pause the video, try it, and then check it, all right? If you still don't understand why you missed it, feel free to come around and ask one of us. All right, so right now I need you to check your answers, and this is a very important part. If you didn't get the same answer I did, why is that? I wrote down my steps, all right? You can always question us. We make mistakes. It's okay. All right? Sometimes we make mistakes on purpose. Sometimes we don't. If you feel like you got the right answer and I got the wrong answer, ask your teacher why. I may have gotten the wrong answer, and that's all right. Okay? Um, so I combined these like terms in here, and I got 8x squared. See, there's a mistake. Minus 26xy plus 15y squared. Number two. I needed two numbers that multiplied the first times last 30 and added to 11. I got those to be 5 times 6 is 30 and 5 plus 6 is 11. I grouped the first two, took out a 5y. I grouped the second two, took out a 6. And I got y plus 1 times 5y plus 6. So that's your first lesson in Algebra 2. If you've not been in our class before, you need to understand a few things. Number one, learn. This is all about learning. There's a lot of shortcuts, but the fastest, most effective way to do this is to learn the first time. So when you struggle and you have questions, ask for help. Ask a friend, ask a neighbor, ask someone not in your class, ask a teacher. That's what we're here for, all right? All right, you're not alone in this math. We know that it's hard sometimes, okay? So keep your head up, do your best, and you'll be just fine, all right? In the meantime, go out and be a positive change in this world. Have a great day. See you next time.